Hello and welcome back to another video from Napoleonic PC Wargamers and today a little bit different I'm going to be looking at all of the JTS Napoleonic titles because I've seen a quite a common recurring theme that says you know which is the best one to buy in the sales which one do I start with I'm new to it which is the next one I should get and so on and so on and so on there's a general consensus out there to always go with the one that interests you the most in the campaign that interests you the most and that's very much what I'll be doing and what we'll be having a look at however there's a lot more to them and there's not always a lot of information out there for what you get in each title some are better than others on the website um and we'll be having a look at what each title actually gives you so what i'm going to be doing is looking at things like gameplay what you actually get with one of these titles in case you are brand new to the series what's in a package why they are so good and why they're so revered um have a look at the gameplay having a look at the ai the graphics the sound the historical accuracy the fantastic historical accuracy that comes with these games um having a look at where they come into their own and that is in multiplayer having a look at the replayability and value for money um, and then just a quick look at modding as well because they get a bad rep for graphics which I think is a little bit unfair but we'll, we'll delve into that along with basically every title what scenarios are in a title what's the biggest uh, what the campaigns are etc etc so that's the plan and without any further ado let's have a look at what's actually available so in having a look at the titles I there is 14 titles available and I just didn't know what order to put them in. I don't want to put them in order of preference. I didn't want to put them in order of size or when they came out or anything like that. I just thought the easiest thing to do was a chronological order. So the 14 titles are covering the Republic Bayonets on the Rhine. On the Rhine. That's our first and second coalition. Then moving to Marengo, Northern Italy, Napoleon's early days. And then he goes up to Austerlitz, his absolute masterpiece. And then we go into Germany when he just steamrolled the Prussians. Uh, then we've got Eilau Friedland, when he managed to actually um, push them back over the winter and then get into Poland. And then Wagram, where he suffered a, a bit of a defeat, and then got his own back at Campaign Ekmel. Got two Peninsula War titles. We've got uh, in the eyes of the French and the eyes of the British. So we've got Bola, Bo, Bo, start that one again. Bonaparte's Peninsula War, and we also have uh, Wellington's Peninsula War. Ill-fated attempt to go into Russia with over half a million men, that's also covered, as is his retreat into the sort of the Rhineland and the German Republic with uh, two campaigns with Bautzen and Leipzig. Defence of France is covered in campaign 1814 and then the culmination, uh, when he, the Hundred Days campaign, um, we have Waterloo itself. So we can see we've got nice wide and varied, um, all the main campaigns for the most part, of uh, Napoleon of Napoleon's career. So what are these titles if you are just starting out and you are unsure? Well, it's kind of, as it looks like, a, a hex encounter based war game set in Napoleonic period, although JTS covers <laughs> pretty much every main period you could uh, think of um and we're dealing with hexes of about 100 meters well they are 100 meters we've got some absolutely massive maps ranging from huge scenarios battle of moscow here for example um and down to small scale couple of turns skirmishes and what have you um each turn represents 10 to 15 minutes um and it's on well, it's not on an operational scale and it's not on a tactical scale it's what i would sort of say grand tactical battalion level that kind of level um 10 to 15 minute turns during the night it does go up to um sort of four hours because traditionally combat wasn't done during the night you can play in turns where you do all of your movement defensive melee um and attacking in one then send it over to the ai or, or another player or you could do it in phase turns, where each player does his offensive, then his defensive, then his melee, then his offensive turns, and it sort of splits it up a little bit more long-winded. Um, all the units are there. Um, historical accuracy is there. We've got cavalry. Um, we've got infantry, and we have uh, artillery as well. So combined arms is very important in these games. And... Um, we're going to have a look at each sort of segment in it in a little bit more detail, but that's pretty much what you get with these Napoleonic titles.
Well, this is one sort of grey area that people read and play the game and they're just not happy with the graphics. And I've got a couple of things to say on this. Graphics against gameplay. Gameplay is going to trump any game for me each and every time. I don't really care to an extent what it looks like. And if you're looking for a modern first-person shooter, AAA title that, you know, £60 on the new PlayStation 5, this is not. It's as far from that scale as is possible. But, in fairness... The John Tiller guys don't ever claim that this is a, ju- ju- a graphically, beg your pardon, um, superior product or anything like that. They are the graphics are very much um, in keeping with what you're expecting. It's hex encounter based stuff. The units look like the units they're supposed to within reason. The horses and uh, cavalry look like they do. The artillery looks like it should. The map is more than adequate. Some titles do have updated 3D maps. Some don't. Um, the stock games, yeah, they get a little bit of stick, but it doesn't take much to go on the internet, find some mods, and give it a lick of paint, and it looks sort of a lot better. Um, you can even mod it yourself, and I'll show you later how where the files are and stuff like that. It, it really isn't difficult. I don't think the graphics are bad in the slightest, and I think people have wrong expectations for what they're expecting with these games. And it's a shame because these type of games, if you're a true war gamer, then I don't believe that graphics should really come into it. Yes, they are not the greatest, but they are certainly not the worst either. And I think it ha- uh, these titles have a very unfair reputation when it comes to graphics, and it doesn't take much to actually brush them up and as i mentioned they are not the bn and end all if you're a serious war gamer you you don't mind the graphics they're completely functional more than adequate for what they do in my opinion and what i should mention is that all the titles you see or you're going to see today i've actually modded i've used mods of mods and other people's mods that i've then modded and i thought about leaving or going back to the stocks to see what you get but I, I think I'm going to leave it here, A, because it's just too much work to take everything out, reinstall it, and put it back in and change folders and everything. And to kind of show you what you could actually get. And it doesn't take much work to do. All my mods are available um, for free. Other people's mods are available for free. And you could end up with something with spending half an hour, an hour or so on the internet looking a lot better than the stock, which, as I mentioned, is just uh, is an unfair reputation, in my opinion. So another area, a contentious area, I suppose, is the AI. And again, I think these games get a very unfair reputation and rap for having... I'm not going to say no AI. They don't claim to have a next-generation AI that takes years to develop and costs a fortune. What it does is provide you with the historical tracks of the enemy, whoever you're facing against the AI. Yes, they will do some crazy things. It's not stated out by any means. And I always say, just treat the AI something to shoot, something to move, and something to shoot at, and something to shoot back at you. In the smaller scenarios, it's good. Each title, as far as I'm aware, uses exactly the same AI. So it's not like one title has a better AI than the others. And... I think people have wrong expectations of what it actually is. Where it comes into its own is play by email that we'll discuss later on. But the AI is, again, adequate. Don't expect amazing things, but then again, it's not the worst AI out there, believe it or not. There are certainly other games that I've played that even more bewildering decisions are made by the computer on behalf of my AI opponent. So the AI, it is adequate. Just manage your expectations. It gives you something to shoot at and something to shoot back at you. Sound, again, I think is somewhere that these games get an unfair reputation. The sound is more than adequate. Horses sound like horses are moving. The troops sound like troops. Muskets sound like muskets. Cannon sounds like cannon. Um, The music, it's okay. It adds a little bit, but those in the know know how to change it. And again, it's very easy. Just use a certain type of WAV file or just use a WAV file. And when things move, um, you know, you can hear they sound like they should um, sound. There are sound mods, I've done a sound mod available, which adds a little bit more ambience, a little bit different music. You can change the music to your favorite nation, what you're playing, etc. And the sound, I think, again, unfair, but it does what it says on the tin and provides atmosphere and everything sounds like it should.
Now, I have to mention the historical accuracy that goes into every John Silver title is above and beyond even your uh, wildest expectations. Uh, I mean, some people I've seen recently are actually asking for orders of battle and things on the websites just so they can use them as a source of reference for their papers or just wargaming hobby or whatever they're doing with it. They're actually using these as a benchmark. Everybody's present. Everybody has the correct uniforms, the flags, the numbers are correct, um, the time, just everything. The amount of detail, the amount of depth that they go into, the research that's done for each and every single title is just absolutely amazing. Now, every title will come with uh, designer notes as well. Um, that give you a little bit of flavour, a bit about the background of what you're actually looking at. They're well worth reading, and in fairness, a lot of this information you'd have to get from books, um, um, from the internet, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and take time to do it and spend money to do it. These kind of books aren't the cheapest, and some of it is very hard to find information, particularly on some orders of battle, of some obscure uh, or the more obscure scenarios and stuff like that. So the historical accuracy is pristine. It's absolutely top notch. One of the first things I do when people complain about the AI and they're not happy with it is suggest play by email. Multiplayer are really where these games, all of these titles come into their own. Fighting against another human opponent, there is absolutely nothing like it. Playing out these battles or campaigns as well, you can do by email. It's very easy. Shut up a Discord if you want, if you, even if email is too much hassle for you, and just send files across to each other. I'd normally do it play by email just with turns rather than phases because it takes an awful long time. Got a, loads of games on the go, enjoyed most of them against most of my opponents. Um, and the other thing is that, oh, excuse me, um, you meet a lot of good people, a lot of, of people that I could call friends now that I've never actually met face to face. But during the course of lockdown, when I got into these games, play by email, I've met some really good people. You know who you are probably when I'm talking about you. Um, and it's not just the games themselves, you're actually discussing what went on, the ins and outs of Napoleonic warfare and the units involved. And it, it really does open up these games worth the entry price alone just for the play by email aspect. Now the next section down is two sort of separate ones, value for money and replayability. Now yes, they're not the cheapest games on the market and a lot of people think, oh, it's a very old game, 25 years old and they're charging full price. But let me put an end to that myth and that misconception. If you were, the analogy I use is if you were to go out with your friends, you take your partner out, whatever it was, or you buy something, a DVD or go to cinema, whatever it might be, you're going to spend 15, 20, 30 pounds on that for maybe a couple of hours entertainment and a headache in the morning if you go out. These games, if you were to divide it, if I certainly was to divide it by the amount of pence per hour that each title has given me in terms of entertainment, then it's, it's extremely good value for money. I don't think there's any other games that cover in depth the Napoleonic campaigns as much, I mean, across the board, um, as much as these titles. The level of historic accuracy that you get, the amount of research that goes into them, you can open up knowing that, for example, this is the position of each and every troop and uh, squadron and battalion and regiment on the day in that battle. The sheer amount of scenarios that you get. You will never be able in a lifetime to play out every single scenario, uh, multiplayer and solo, as well as each and all of the campaigns. It's just absolutely impossible. It can't be done. So I challenge anybody to actually do that, or if anybody has done it, I'll take that back and fair play to you. But the sheer amount of content that you get, the value for money in terms of replayability, going over it again, playing it from the other side, trying a different maneuver, being able to play out your favorite battles and campaigns that you've read about. Honestly, I think they're cheap at half the price. Granted, they don't look like a modern game that may justify the price. However, they're not trying to sell you a modern game that looks amazing and has the next generation AI. Take it for what it is, a fantastic war game. So modding, making your games look a little bit better or sound a little bit better is fairly easy. All you need is paint 
um, a little bit of know-how how to deal with um, certain files and for every title that you have if you open it up go to the file location where you installed it go to the info and map file that's where pretty much everything is um, <coughs> excuse me our uh, units and leaders are in here and every box is just a bitmap image so if you edit it with paint 3d for example or even just generic old paint then it doesn't take much to actually do it at all um, what you'll realize is the color palette isn't amazing all the time and what you've got to do is just make sure at the end of it the dimensions of it are exactly the same or you get a bit of overlap um, in the map file themselves this is where all your maps and hexes and bases and trees and all that sort of thing are again they're all bitmap files you can just edit them with paint as always if you were trying to do this it's a bit time consuming but make sure you back up and copy your original files because when you mess up then you have to reinstall the game unless you can just rewrite it with the original uh, material uh, all the sound we've got background sounds here just all the sounds are WAV files and you can swap them out doesn't really matter what they're called as long as they are dot wave the the system will find it the game will find it um, and that's yeah the newer titles that have uh, the new maps they're in a maps plural folder and these are all bitmaps again and you can um, easily manipulate these as well just open them up come up as a big folder oh sorry a big pardon a big file I found some of them a little bit light for example so I just made them a little bit darker you put filters on them make them slight, look different put buildings in it is fairly easy to do now a lot of uh, games have their own mods and they are much better modders than me I, as I said I've tended to download loads of mods and mod them and mod them into my own and it just becomes a bit of a mess I can't claim everything you see uh, media is where all your um, background sounds are uh, sorry beg your pardon not ambience where all your gunfire movement and that, that thing and everything like that and again they're not hard i've got a sound mod they're all wave files it's fairly easy to do a lot of places have mods for free a lot of the things have already been included in updates and things like that but if you have a look on some of the websites and i want to mention them just in case i accidentally miss anybody out and don't give sort of credit where credit's due um, a lot of these games just have um a load of mods out there that are very easy and if you want to do them yourself then by all means do it yourself it's very easy just make sure you back up so the million dollar question which title do i go for out of the 14. i'm new to it uh, or which titles next which is the best in my opinion I, i'm going to give you that because it's very subjective so if we're looking at for example what's in each of the titles in terms of the number of scenarios that may not necessarily be in the stock game but are available to put in so a complete representation of the amount of scenarios you could end up with what the campaigns are what sort of periods they cover um, and the campaigns that are included and then the all important so which battles are actually in there what are the main battles that are in there so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to do it in chronological more or less order so we can just have a look at each of the titles in turn see what game is there the content of the game and i'm going to leave that up to you then i'm just going to give you the information you can decide for yourself so the first one i'm going to look at is republican bayonets on the rhine all in all we can have a total of 246 scenarios including valmy jamap near winden uh, permazen kaiserlauten turkoin Tournay, Fluras, Aldenhoven, Altenkirchen, Ettlingen, Nersheim, Amberg, Würzburg, Emmendingen, Ostrach, Stockach, Zurich, Bergen, Kastrikum, Engen, Meskirch, Neuburg, and Amfing. So there is a lot there. There's a lot there. Um, larger scenario comes in at 252 turns. It's a fairly monster scenario. It's not by any means the biggest, but it's certainly not the smallest. And you get four campaigns in total you get the first co coalition campaign 1792 to 94 then the three rhine campaigns sort of second coalition 1796 1777 1799 beg your pardon and 1800 so that's what you get in the package or what you could end up with in the package now i have to say it's one of the titles i've probably got the least experience with i played a couple of battles out against the ai learning the scenarios and just who does what and when and where and why so the other good thing is um, 
you know, AI, it lets you get the lay of the land before you go on to play in a human opponent, which I strongly suggest. Um, so, a lot of cool things with this title uh, that others don't have. Um, you've got balloons, um, early observation balloons, like Fluorus, where you can sort of get, um, I don't know where they are here without looking, um, where you can, you know, pretty much see half of the battlefield, 180 hexes, I think it is. Um, a lot of people have a lot of good things to say about this. It's a little bit too early for me. Didn't like the earlier stuff. I prefer the later stuff, sort of maybe Russia onwards. And although I was saying that, I quite like um, the Prussian campaign, Jenner campaign, Ada Freeland. Um, but I think because of the amount of scenarios, they're wide and varied. It's different. It's not just Napoleon. It's the first coalitions, Army de Centre, Army de Nord, and things like that. Wide open battlefields, different units. People do have a lot of good things to say about this, and the game itself has a very good reputation. Um, and I don't think anybody that has it has a bad word to say about it, basically. So that is Republic Bayonets on the Rhine. Next up then, Campaign Marengo. Uh, Napoleon, where he sort of made a name for himself, what a very early campaign up in Northern Italy, stroke Austria. Um, so what are we getting here? We got a total of 128 scenarios that could be available, covering all of his early works, the early years. Uh, so we've got Launo, Voltri, uh, Montenotte, Dego, Cava, Lodi, Lonato, Castiglione, Bassano, Caldiero, Arco, uh, Rivoli, Magano, Mincio, Vaprio, Tadoni, Trebia, Novi, um, Sabliano, Trebia, Marengo itself, Romano, Castiaggio, Romano, Castillejo, Montebello, and Cuneo. So, a lot of very famous battles there. Largest scenario comes in a whopping 352 turns. And believe it or not, that is still in the series, nowhere near the biggest um, scenario that's available. Three campaigns at all his early years, 1796 to 97, 99, and then 1800 itself. So, Marengo, uh, that's the next one. So I'll hold my hands up and say, from the off, this is the title that I have the least experience with. I played maybe one or two scenarios out of it, tried a campaign, and just went on to other things. Um, it's his early stuff. A lot of people, again, have good things to say about it, especially those that like to fight out those early 1800 campaigns as Napoleon. Um, but as with all titles, you know, a little lick of paint here and there. It looks a little bit better. Sound with a little lick of paint. Looks and sounds better. A lot of scenarios, maybe not the most of the scenarios in the series. Some decent campaigns by all accounts. Um, and you're fighting with the early French Napoleon in his sort of, not even his prime, in his early days. Wide, varied campaigns. A lot of mountains up here, forts and sieges and stuff like that. All in all, I've heard it's a fairly decent title. So next, <clears throat> next up we got campaign Austerlitz and where Napoleon pretty much made his name with the famous battle itself. Um, scenarios 120, there's not too many, but they are very wide and varied. They're really good scenarios in campaign Austerlitz. Enjoy playing it um, and all the different um, scenarios in there. So we got Vertingen, Gunsberg, Memmingen, El Elshingen, Ulm, which is a good battle. Uh, Herbrichtingen, Nerishim, Caldiero, Amstetten, Mariazel. Durenstein, Sean Graben, Goldback, Austerlitz itself, and Nordlingen. Largest scenario, Wappen 265, so it is a fairly big monster. And we've got six campaigns. We've got the Elm campaign, the Danube campaign, the Moravia campaign, the Italian campaign, Austerlitz itself, and then a fantastic Operation Eagle, which was, gives you a chance, a hypothetical what if Napoleon actually launched Eagle against the United Kingdom, invaded the south coast of England, and you get to fight the French on UK soil. I mean, personally, I'd recommend this title um, just for the fact that you can play out Austerlitz and Ulm, two fantastic battles, very famous battles. Um, but for me, the most enjoyment I had, um, believe it or not, played at PBM, a little bit unbalanced perhaps, um, it weighted strongly in favour of the British, but still had fun nonetheless discussing about it and being able to fight French on British soil is the Eagle campaign when you've got just ragtag of troops on the south coast of England around Dover and Kent. Um, and then you've got to defend beach landings around here. You've got Martello Towers that, um, to help you defend. And the, the whole premise is that they've got to work their way north, I think, up to Oxford, right up here. Um, and yeah, had a great time doing it. Plus, it's got Austerlitz. Uh, and I've been informed, well, it's not a definite, 
If there was to be another round of 3D map updates for the Napoleonic series, then probably Austerlitz would be first in line. Probably. That's not confirmed. Um, so, you know, you could get it on that premise um, with the hope that one day it may indeed get some 3D updates. So next we move up to Germany, early years of Napoleon again when he blitzkrieged the Prussians um, and campaign Jena. Now this is actually one of my favourite and to look at the numbers it might not necessarily mean that it's the most value for money but let me explain. So all in all about 100 scenarios which isn't the greatest, there's a lot of um, what ifs and hypotheticals, there is a lot of battle still here, Weimar, Schleis, Saarfield, Jena, Auerstedt, Halle, Grusen, Altenzaum. Zedernick, Carlsberg, Heinspitz, and a lot of scenarios with what if and what if so-and-so arrived early, hypotheticals, etc, etc. Largest scenario, you can do the whole Jenna Alstart campaign in one map, in one scenario, and it's 524 turns. Believe it or not, that's still not quite the largest of all the scenarios in the series, in all the series. Very, very close, only 10 tons short. Um, However, it's one of the best, in my opinion, campaign scenarios that you can get in the entire series. Um, there's four campaigns to do as well, um, which are, again, good campaigns. Now, there's just something about these early Prussians. I, I quite like the Prussians in all, um, to be fair. But the fact that they, you know, they were absolutely steamrolled uh, not long after Frederick the Great and the chance to actually play them out properly without their... Um, chain of command hampering them down and things like that makes it it's just appealing for me I, I like playing as the Prussians even back in 1806 so um, as I said that the I haven't got it loaded here but that scenario the whole campaign as one sort of constant map that you're not switching and changing between scenarios and playing individual battles makes it almost worth the the price in itself uh, as a title it's uh, absolutely fantastic can't recommend it enough certainly would be in one of my top three others may be put off by the the apparent lack of scenarios i suppose um but the the subject matter as i keep mentioning the subject matter is important when you're choosing these games i like the campaign i like playing as prussians there is a absolutely fantastic one single map campaign and it would be highly rated it'd be right up there for me and next one up, another very good title, Campaign Eilau Friedland. Had a lot of fun with this. Um, did a film of um, Eilau itself and had loads of fun doing it. It was really, really enjoyable. Good amount of scenarios, 233. That is up at the higher echelons, um, sort of mid-high number of scenarios that are available for it. And that's got Bison, Chernavo, Borokovo, uh, Kolozab, Sochachin, Golimin, Polutsk, uh, Morungan, Bergfield, Yankovo, Eilau itself, Ostrelka, Brownsburg, Gutstadt, Lomiton, Spanden, Heilsberg, Friedland itself, and then Domnau. Sorry if I've murdered any of these names. Those who watch my video, names are not my forte. Um, Loudest scenarios, only 90 turns, but you get a huge amount of different scenarios in this game. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of hypotheticals, what ifs, they break down a lot of the battles into stages, so you can just do that stage of the battle, and then with what ifs as well. So it does offer a, a lot of value for money in terms of scenarios because they're the fun scenarios as well. Campaigns, we get four. We've got an 1806 campaign. Um, we've got the Polish campaign. We've got the winter campaign. Um, we've got two spring campaigns as well in 1807, or you can play that the full campaign in itself. And those campaigns are really fun um, because <coughs> excuse me, you get to fight the Prussians and you get to fight the Russians. So there's a lot of wide, varied armies in some really nice scenarios in some really nice terrain. So all in all, this is a very good title. So as I mentioned, it's another game that you can change out for winter terrain as well. And, and this is uh, the Battle of Eilau itself. Probably one of the best scenarios I've ever played and I've had the most fun playing is this battle here because of the, the snow that reduces visibility. I played at PVM, my opponent wasn't the greatest. He was just sort of a little bit foolhardy and ch charged with everything, but I still had fun defending it and he caused me a lot of problems and I really did enjoy it. Um, uh, it looks great. I mean, early Russians, early Prussians, early um, French again, and uh, really balanced scenarios. I think that's quite an important thing as well. And you get to play out what ifs, lots of maneuver room for maneuvering for cavalry, but the snow and the blizzards and the bad weather slow you down. It's a real thinker. It's, it's a really good war game. Solid all-rounder is what I would call this game.
So, on to the Austrians now, I suppose, um, and the campaign ECMO, which is um, a lot of people's favourite game. A lot of people have a lot of good things to say about this. A lot of scenarios coming in at 210, including ECMO, Ebensburg, Landshut, Rathspon and Cecile. Um, largest scenario is the largest scenario in the game, the whole um, ECMO campaign itself in one map, 534 turns. That is an absolute monster and is going to take you at least a year, if not more, I would say, um, to actually complete. Four campaigns, we get the ECMO and the Wagram campaign. Um, now this one you can actually link with campaign Wagram, another game, and have one big campaign spread over two games. There's the ECMO campaign itself and variants, um, and then there's a the large map um, for some sort of larger scale um, one-off um, campaigns as well a lot, as I mentioned a lot of people say a lot of good things about this game and they would say and it is often recommended as one of their favorites now it is the first title as you can see that has the new lovely updated 3d maps it's a lovely title um, I'm gonna say I haven't got much experience with ECMO um, I have tried it and if you like the Battle of Ekmo, then this is certainly the game for you, because as you saw, the scenarios, in my opinion, aren't the most varied. There's an awful lot. Most of the scenarios are variants and breaking down the Battle of Ekmo into smaller sort of hypothetical or bite-sized chunks. And there are tons and tons and tons where you can see hundreds of different scenarios just for Ekmo alone. Again, for the subject matter, if you like fighting against the Austrians in this period, then this is a, another game for you and link it up with Wagram. However, it, it just doesn't get taken my fancy, um, the Austrians. I like later war Austrians when they're combined in sort of battles and nations. Um, however, there are a lot of <laughs> different scenarios here that you could break down, play hypothetical. So as a war standalone war game, even if you don't have much interest, you do get a lot for your money. You get the new 3D maps as well. The units look good. Historic, everything's there. And I can see why it is so highly rated. Just personally, and that's just pu purely personal, is because of the fact that I, I'm just not... It's not my favourite um, campaign of the Napoleonic periods. However, as a war game, a standalone war game, it is a lot of fun good units large scale units like huge campaign map as well makes it worth almost the money in itself 534 turns good luck with that one um, but everyone that's played it or is playing it has very very good things to say about the game as a whole and that massive campaign as well plenty of room for maneuver and warfare um, from start to finish and play it out the way that you want and naturally following on from that must be campaign Vagram then it, as I mentioned it links up with camp or you can link the campaign with um, ECMO 134 scenarios um, it has Abelsberg, Linz, Aspen, Elsing, very good battle, Piav, Raab, Razzian, Cham and Marshfeld um, 160 turn biggest scenario and it's got three campaigns where you can link that ECMO and Vagram um, campaign together you can do the ECMO and Vagram camp uh, or the Vagram campaign itself um, and you have sort of a what happens if you he then push on or when he did push on to Vienna as well so the, there is a lot there uh, especially if you've got an interest in ECMO then this is sort of the next logical one because you get a lot of more of the same but slightly after and, and seeing what happens once he actually got his revenge at Ragram and pushed on to Vienna and pushed those Austrians back so certainly if you've got an interest in this campaign a lot of value for money some good battles some good units so again, I'm going to mention that uh, caveat, it's not my cup of tea, it's not my favourite um, um, period campaign, although it was used in a, a recent uh, um, tournament, campaign Vagram, um, I did stop playing it, time constraints unfortunately, and things like that, and I just wasn't enjoying it for some reason, whether it was the units or, I, I just, it didn't do it for me. That said though, a lot of people do have good things to say about Vagram again, and it's only being ruined by my bias towards later, later on, uh, or later Napoleonic campaigns. Lots of room for manoeuvre, lots of big battles, lots of variants of those battles, um, a chance to push those pesky Austrians back. Um, the actual Battle of Aspen, Esper, Aspen Essling itself is a, is actually a very good battle. Um, I've played it a couple of times against the AI as well and had fun whilst doing it and then just for whatever reason moved on to other things. Had fun doing it, nothing bad to say about this game, just personally not my cup of tea. That's the first, well, I the two 
Peninsula War titles. And I think they slightly stand alone because they do offer a very different play experience than sort of the continental games, large fixed battles and things like that. There's a lot of more smaller scale battles involved with the Peninsula titles, which doesn't make them any less fun. In fact, it can be more fun. Um, it certainly offers something different. Um, coming in, Bonaparte's Peninsula War first, uh, the sort of the earlier Peninsula Wars, more against the Spanish than the British. Uh, coming in at 171 scenarios, including Albuera, Monacid, Manorante, Badajoz, uh, Balin, Barossa, Braga, Campo Mayor, Castle Novo, the Coro River, El Borden, Fuente de Honoro, Grillo, Medellin, Ocano, Oporto, Radina, Rolica, Sabugal, Talavera, very good battle, Toro Vedra, the lines of Toro Vedras, brilliant scenario, and, and Vimera, which is also a very good scenario. Largest turn, uh, or largest scenario, comes in at 250 turns, almost a, a, a mini campaign in itself, very good scenario. Um, and then three full campaigns, the 1808, 1809, and 1810, when Napoleon was actually present himself there. As I mentioned, it does offer a, a slightly different playing experience. Smaller scale units, a lot less large fixed battles. You get to fight against the Spanish or defend Spain. Um, you've got the Siege of Badajoz here. The French have a lot of foreign units down here. Um, and uh, as we all know what happened to the French there, it's a nice opportunity to basically try and turn back time or can do what the Spanish did or can you do what the Spanish did any better. Um, lovely terrain, um, a lot of sort of city and village fighting. You've got all the rebels there. Um, and certainly if you're interested in the Peninsula War, you can't go wrong with this title or the next title. Um, in themselves, they offer fantastic value for money. Um, it's um, Like I mentioned, it is the John Tiller and Napoleonic series, but there's enough different there, different experience to make it a title worthy of actually buying, in my opinion. So naturally, the next nine would be Wellington's Peninsula War, the second of the Peninsula War titles, very much similar vein to the last title, Bonaparte's uh, Peninsula War, but from the side of Wellington and the British. Um, we've got a lot of scenarios here. We're coming in at 182, so there's like, a fair chunk of scenarios available. So we've got all the, the well-known in the British circles anyway, Burgos, Coruña, Maida, Espinosa, Girona, Maya, Molins, Neve, Nivelle, Odal, Ortez, Sagun, Saguntum, Salamanca, very good battle. Uh, San Marcial, Samo Sierra, fantastic battle there if you like your Polish Lancers. Tarragona, Toulouse, very good battle again, getting into south of France. Tudela, Valencia, Vitoria, and Zaragoza. Larger scenario is 100 turns, uh, and we've got three campaigns. We've got the 1809, the 1812, and the 1813. Uh, one of the higher recommended games, uh, certainly for any British friends out there. So as I mentioned, anybody that likes sharp um, British orientation, likes fighting with British troops, this is certainly one to go for. Probably edges it for me because of that reason against Bonaparte's Peninsula War, just because we can play as the British and as Wellington with all his troops there, his Peninsula boys, um, against the French. A lot of good scenarios there, a lot of famous battles that you can play out. Um, again, it, because it's set in Spain, you, you do have the Spanish as well. You've got some Portuguese allies in there. Um, the terrain's good. It makes for a lot of manoeuvring warfare. Um, you can see Salamanca here, great battle here. See if you can do any better as the French on the day. Um, a lot of scenarios, a lot of good scenarios, decent size scenarios, varied scenarios, varied units, all in all, um, a very good all-rounder. Um, and I would highly recommend this one, particularly if you like, like I say, sharp and, and warfare in the peninsula, certainly as the British. And on to 1812 then, and Napoleon's push east into Russia with all those half million men. Um, a, a great title in my opinion 140 scenarios a lot of them do cover sort of Borodino but there is enough there to give you basically the, the, all of the the famous battles in the campaigns so we got Gorka, Ekal, Gatatsk, Lubina, uh, Maloyoslavets, Berezina, Borisov, Borodino worth the money alone for Borodino we'll get to that in a second uh, Drissa, Gorodechna, Krasnoy, Moscow, uh, Salonovka, Ostrovno, Smolensk, 
got a very good battle as well. Tarotino, Vitebsk, and Vajazama. Larger scenario coming in at 140 turns, which is Borodino itself, or a variant of it. Only two campaigns. Uh, we've got a Borodino sort of step-by-step -step, um, breaks the, down the battle itself into the few days that it was fought. Uh, and then you've got the whole Russian uh, campaign of 1812. And uh, that is one of the best campaigns, in my opinion, that I have actually played in all of these titles. So we'll have a look at 1812, a Russian campaign. So I've been completely biased here um the battle of borodino is probably one of my favorite all-time battles let alone the napoleonic wars um just the numbers involved the whole campaign with half a million odd men two russian armies on the retreat trying to face him um and it's a fantastic battle we've had a load of fun playing it against the ai tried to play at pbm didn't actually quite work out um but just the sheer amount of units that you have, the, the the landscape that you've got to cover, not making the same mistake as Napoleon and just going headlong into the redoubts, for example, uh, breaks down the battle into big bite-sized chunks. You've got Moscow there, you've got uh, Smolensk there. All in all, just a fantastic game. It's got the new 3D maps as well. Um, okay, my color palette, I've slightly sort of played around with it and changed it a little bit just so it looks slightly different. Try to get all my games looking very slightly different from the next one. And with the sheer amount of units, the variety of units, you've still got Prussians there, you've got Austrians with them as well, you've got the Germans, the Italians, the Poles, all of them in their proper liveries. Um, and all in all, um, it would be highly recommended solely because of the Battle of Borodino. That's worth the price of the game alone. The campaign is also good. The sheer amount of units that you have, the manoeuvring warfare opportunity that you have, um, and then the Battle of Borodino itself. Nothing bad to say about this game. So as we know, it didn't quite work out in Russia, and he had, had to retreat back west. And this uh, retreat and then the actions in Germany, first of all, covered by Campaign Bautzen. A very good game in itself. Um, 160 scenarios, so a fair chunk, a fair decent amount of scenarios, and a lot of battles included. We've got a lot of decent battles as well. We've got Mokern, Grosgorschen, Lutzen, very good battle, Eichberg, Bautzen itself, uh, Reichenbach, Heinau, uh, Hoyerswerda, Lokal, Yapari, Verret. I'm not even going to go there, okay? That's because um, in amongst campaign bouts and where you get the, the sort of uh, early 1813 scenarios, you also get the Russian Finnish war covering the battles as mentioned there. I'm not going to even try with them. Um, so it's almost kind of two campaigns in one to a certain extent, um, which makes it very good value for money, a very uncovered or, or lesser covered of the campaigns like russia russian finnish war um larger scenario coming in 164 turns so it's a, a fair old uh, chunk of a battle and um, we've got two campaigns we've got the 1813 campaign and we also have the 1813 sort of crossover campaign that's similar to vagram and ecmo that we can link this one with campaign leipzig the next game on the list all in all very very good game and i'll tell you why so as I mentioned before, I really do have a bias against the later war, sort of 1812 onwards, that's what I like playing as. Um, um, and these battles, when you get into Germany, you have loads of room for maneuver warfare, not so much just big fixed battles that you don't have much choice. A lot of these battles you have to, you've got the space to, and the ability to maneuver and jockey into a decent position. This one and the next title leaves they got on the list. Um, wide varied units again you've got a lot of russians you've got austrians you've got prussians you've got the french themselves who are depleted but still pack a punch um the campaign itself is good the battles themselves are good they're interesting they're large but as i mentioned plenty of room for maneuver warfare um it can be linked you get a linked campaign um prussians are back in business after 1806 and all in all yeah, it's one of the better games without a doubt, in my opinion. Um, and we're looking here, Battle of Lutzen, very big battle there. As you can see, look at the size of the map. You've got loads of space to manoeuvre, loads of space. Um, fantastic units, nothing bad to say about this one either. And we naturally get to the sort of second of the 1813 campaign, Campaign, campaign Leipzig. A lot of people's favourites, always comes highly recommended. Um, and let's have a look at what we actually get. Well, we have the ability 
to upload and have in your arsenal i have in mine 313 scenarios that's more than some of the other titles combined so you get an awful lot of scenarios including some great battles lowenberg katzbach grossbeeren goldberg dresden fantastic hegelberg kuhn zana denovitz fantastic battle um, played out a video of that and had loads of fun doing it Godra, Wartenberg, Liebekolovitz, Leipzig, the Battle of Nations with half a million men on a battlefield over three days. Probably one of the best battles in the whole series. Freiburg, Hanau, Kozen, Berlin, all the actions around Berlin, Plagwitz, Danzig, Wachau. Um, we've got a huge 360 turn scenario for the Battle of Nations. Loads of different versions of it, breaking it down as, as, as they do to give you what ifs and alternatives and breaking it down into sort of more bite sized chunks. Of of the battle uh, and five campaigns 1813 campaign that we can link with Bautzen, uh, Denovitz, Grossbeeren, Leipzig, the Battle of Nations, and Silesia. All in all, there's a hell of a lot in this package, and even more than there's actually just put on the screen here. So, apart from all of that. Um, with the most amount of scenarios that I've counted in any of the games um, some of the best battles of the period represented in the game including here at Dresden um, we also have the lovely updated 3D maps um, so all in all I, it, it would definitely be one of the higher recommended um, apart from all that though the Battle of Nations half a million men Austrians, Prussians, Russians um, Swedes and the French themselves in one of the biggest battles in the world at any time half a million men it's absolutely huge had loads of fun playing it gets a little bit messy um uh, the campaigns are good as well the units are good uh just the, sheer, the sheer volume of them i mean even here in dresden um with nay we've got a huge amount of units here the weather comes in and spoils it a little bit but loads of room for maneuvers similar to bouton as well not so many big fixed battles um having to play with a lack of french cavalry it's a real challenge really varied interesting battles all in all it's right up there in my list of recommendations uh, just for the sheer content as a war game if you're new to it then certainly consider having um leipzig um, as your first purchase because of the amount of scenarios the amount of campaigns the good battles the good campaigns the amount of units the varied units um, there's even some Norwegian uh, or is it uh, Sweden Denmark um, campaign or, or battles in here as well that I've, uh, I saw so all in all it's for me I'd have to say and for a lot of people one of the best uh, in the series I'm certainly a good place to start so then we see Napoleon getting pushed back into his own backyard and his absolutely amazing defense of France in campaign 1814. Again, for me personally, one of the best games in the whole series. Got 115 scenarios, um, but they are fantastic scenarios. Uh, almost to a scenario um, break them down um, this one there is a lot of variation and, and different sort of scenarios but there's enough there unique scenarios I mean to make it um, an absolutely fantastic and varied and interesting game all the famous battles um, of La, La Patrie and Danger are there Bar Bar Aub, Brienne, La Rothaire, Mincio, Champaber, uh, Montmiral, Chateau Thierry, Vauchamp, Montmartre, Montereau a crown, Leon, Reims, Arcus Sorob, Fair Champenois, Saint Dizier, Paris itself, it's a last ditch attempt at um, Paris, uh, and La Souffel. Larger scenario, a whopping 310 turns. This is Lunge North as he goes to, to um, confront Blucher um, as a sort of single map again, and there is a whopping 10 campaigns here. Um, slightly variant some of them are head-to-head -head, um and solo um but there is a fantastic amount of really really good scenarios uh all in all for me a lot of people don't have a, an interest in it in campaign 1814 but as a standalone war game i'd certainly recommend it i have to say i've probably had the most fun overall um out of all the titles in the series playing campaign campaign 1814 by pbm and by um uh, against the ai napoleon's fantastic last that he's back to his best in this campaign um lots of units from various armies across um, all of france um get to play out the defense of paris um you get to see if you can do any better than the allies can you do even better than the french 
um, and the bowling did amazing. Um, we get a lot of late war, fantastic cavalry. You get a lot of just uh, militia units that you have to deal with. All in all, um, as, I, as I mentioned, as a standalone war game, even if you don't have much interest in the 1814 campaign, you won't go wrong with this um, title. It's one of the better ones. Certainly, let's say top five for me. And finally, we get to the last campaign, and that is the 100 Days campaign covered in Campaign Waterloo. And 215 scenarios, so it was a fair chunk of scenarios covering all the main battles of the time and some what ifs. We've got Bren, Le Conte, Chatelet, Howe, Ligny, Mont, Linvale, Placenoir, uh, Catrebras, Soliermont, Tom Green, Waterloo, Wavre, um, and loads of different scenarios in between. Um, Larger scenario comes in a whopping 400 turns and it's one of the best scenarios I think I've ever played in a game. I'm still ongoing uh, two against one with this. Um, the most fun I've had in a war game on a computer, um, that is for sure, covering the whole 100 days campaign. There is four campaigns in there as well with lots of what ifs, um, wide and varied. And I would go as far to say that um, although there is another real time uh, Waterloo game out there that is probably the best Waterloo game as a war game, as a hex game, uh, hex encounter game, this Waterloo title from JTS is, if not the best um, game that covers Waterloo. So, uh, very, very highly recommended, and it's Waterloo. You can't go wrong with Waterloo. And I just wanted to show you this scenario here. For all you purists, stroke sadists out there, if you really wanted to do one of the most famous battles in history, um, you could go with a company-sized or company-level um, depiction of the battle itself. Absolutely fantastic. I haven't been brave enough. <laughs> I don't have the time <laughs> to actually cover it. But um, it, it is there, and I think it's just impressive just to look at it. I like sort of setting up things like that, you know, and just having a look at it. I'm actually in, in awe of it, and having to deal with all those units, that's uh, uh, maybe one day, maybe one day for sure. And the other thing is, uh, with Waterloo, it, it does have the new lovely 3D maps, and what else to say about Waterloo, um, absolutely fantastic battle. Um, you get to play it and all of its variants. You get to be the Prussians. You can see in the campaign if uh, Napoleon can do any better. All in all, like I say, this is probably the best all-rounder. Um, it's not my favourite, um, but it would certainly be the one that I, and as you can see from forums and, and when people ask it, the one that everybody recommends. You can't go wrong with Waterloo. Everything's familiar. Everything's where it should be. That level of historic accuracy is up there, as we always mention. Um, breaking it down into, look at that, I mean, company level. It's absolutely crazy. Um, but if you're brave enough, I mean, that would be, f for me, the pinnacle. The comp company level campaign. Oof, that, that's a bit too much. The battle itself would be, I mean, that's 212 turns. But certainly Waterloo, right up there, and probably the one that I would, yeah, I'd say recommend to most people. Certainly um, if they haven't got it, and certainly if they're new to the series just because of it's Waterloo. And they've done such a good job of it as well. So after all that, I've given you sort of a, hopefully an insight into what you get with it. My opinion did creep in, I suppose, a little bit. That was to, that was going to be natural. Um, and I just put a table together just so, so you can look at what scenarios are available in terms of the number of scenarios, the largest scenario, the number of campaigns, and whether or not they have the 3D updates, because graphics will be, at the end of the day, important to some people, with the caveat that we covered at the, the start of the video there. Um, the... I, they're all one and the same and i always go back to whatever campaign you have the most interest in should be your next purchase because the level of historic accuracy and you reading your books and watching documentaries or whatever that's going to all be in there and you'll get the most fun out of it um if you're new to the series um maybe not go for one of what i would consider maybe the the more obscure ones go with something like leipzig because there is a hell of a lot there in that package with the new 3d maps as well um Obviously, we said Waterloo. You can't go wrong with Waterloo. That's a very good starting one because it's so well documented, so well covered. You get a lot of enjoyment out of that. Um, if graphics are important to you, then have a look at the four titles that actually have um, 
the three D updated maps. Remember that uh, Austerlitz may in the future, if there's another round of updates, um, may be first on the list to get another one. Um, we can also consider price bayonets on the Rhine uh, is twenty five percent off at the moment at John Tiller. It's in their sort of sale permanent sale section. Um, uh, I don't know. It's completely up to you. I, I, I have my favourites just because of that very reason where I choose the ones and I play the ones that I have the most interest in the most. I do have them all, as you can see, and the some I think are better than others um, just because, again, um, of, of the subject interest. As always, thank you very much for watching. Um, hopefully this will generate a little bit of debate. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, drop it on the website and everybody will surely come to your aid and answer your question, give their experiences of each game. I'm not saying that my list is perfect. Um, I may have missed a couple of things out here and there, given my opinion that people don't agree with, but that, that's good. Let's get the conversation going. And it is a purchase that you're gonna get a lot of entertainment out of no matter what you go for particularly when you start playing it in play by email where these games i cannot recommend them thoroughly enough as a war game in itself um, and if you have interest in napoleonic war gaming then you go for the one that you have the most interest in the one that you're most familiar with because you will get the most entertainment out of that one okay guys thank you very much for watching as always happy gaming and don't forget to leave some comments some likes or whatever i'm not really bothered about likes and things like that is to generate uh, some good old conversation let's get a debate going which is your favorite why is your favorite and what would you recommend to somebody for a next title or what would you recommend to them as a first title try and convert people into this fantastic series of war games